Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Engineering Classes. We are continuing with our GATE CS preparation series and in today's lecture we'll solve two questions on theory of computation. We'll start and do the first question today and later in the upcoming video we'll solve the second question. So the first question states, consider the context-free grammar over the alphabet given below. S and T are non-terminals and you are given two context-free grammars G1 and G2. The language L of G1 intersection L of G2 is. Now you have to find out the languages that are generated by these two grammars and then find their intersection and tell whether the result, the resulting language would be context-free, regular, recursive or finite and or other some combination of these. Alright, so first thing that we have to do here is find out the language that will be generated. So starting with the first grammar that is given. See, if you observe here where S is the starting symbol, the type of strings that would be generated by this grammar would be, if L1 is the grammar, first of all, this grammar would generate lambda. Now, how lambda or epsilon or a null string would be generated? It would be generated by starting with the start symbol, going to T and from T, replacing T with epsilon or lambda. So, start with S, go to T, use this production. From T, use the second production, T goes to lambda. So, lambda would be one of the strings present in language L1, which is generated by G1. Now, what is the second kind of strings that can be generated by this grammar? The second kind of strings can be C+. Now, how would they be generated? You have to think what all combination of productions you can apply so that you produce a complete grammar that is generated by G1. So, how would these be generated? If I start with S again and use the production S goes to T, the second production here, S goes to T. And now instead of replacing T with lambda or epsilon, I replace it with CT. So I replace it with CT. And if I want to terminate this string generation, I would replace T by lambda again. So I would get a single C, which is single occurrence of C. Or I can replace this T with another CT because there is no other option except for replacing T with epsilon or replacing T with a lambda or a CT. So if I replace it with a lambda, I would generate a C. If I replace it with the first production here CT, I would generate C, C and T and so on. If I want to terminate it somewhere, I would generate some number of C and to terminate, I would have to replace T with a lambda and therefore the resulting string would be C plus. Why C plus and not C star? Because using this kind of productions, S goes to T and T replacing CT, T being replaced by CT, we would at least have one C because if after S goes to T, I replace T by lambda, I would get an empty string which I have already written here. Alright, so C star, that means if I write C star, that is equal to lambda plus C plus this string or the language generated by this. So I have accommodated lambda here. The set of productions using the, the sequence of productions that I've written here will produce C plus. That means a single or more than one occurrence of C. Now, what are other type of strings that are possible from G1? The language generated by G1 can also generate A, N, B, N. Now, how will these be generated? Starting from S again, I now use the first production A, S, B. When I use ASB, I can replace this S with ASB again. So it would be A, that was the earlier A, replacing S by ASB again and the old B, this one. Alright, so what do I get? I get double A, S and double B. So you should notice here that always whenever an S is replaced by another ASB, 
a pair a and b would be a new pair would be included in the previous a's and b all right so this string would always go like some number of a's followed by s followed by an equal number of b's and to terminate if you only want a and b and you don't want c you would use a lambda and this would terminate into a n b n all right because every s introduces an equal number of a's and b's now the last category of strings that can be generated by g1 would be a n c c plus this is not a star this is a plus in and followed by b n now how would these be generated if i replace this s with a t and that t with a ct then in that case i would get these string now how will that be done let me explain it to you here see if i have s the this one i replace it with asb again i replace this s with asb and now i replace this s with t because i have to introduce a c here all right and this t is replaced by ct followed by double b and this can continue the more i replace t with the ct the more c i will introduce into this production set so this would become a n some number of c now also here also a single c or followed by more than one c and then followed by equal number of n when c is not present that would be the case a n b n all right so the final language or if i have to write it in a single statement l1 would look like a n c star b n such that n is greater than equal to 0 now if you pay little attention to these four expression that i have written it would this expression is a combination of all these so how is this coming a n c star b n if i combine the last two then i would get a n c star b n and if n is equal to 0 so a number of a and number of b would become equal to 0 only c would be left and if in that case i make the number of c equal to 0 or the occurrences of c are 0 only lambda would be left so you have to think a little but you have to be quick in generating the language because you have to solve the further question also similarly you have to generate the language from g2 now g2 is also using a similar set of production the only difference is asb is replaced by bsa so the language that you would be getting from g2 is almost same the order is different in terms of a and b so the language l2 would be b raised to power n c star a raised to power n such that n is greater than equal to zero now if you take the intersection of l1 and l2 l1 g l or l generated by g1 intersection the language generated by g2 you have to take the intersection of these two languages now if you note very carefully there would not be a common string that is starting at a and ending at b and the set of strings that starts at b and ends at a all right there would be a separate set starting with a ending at b and a separate set starting with b ending at a so the only common thing between these two languages is the case when n becomes zero when n in both these languages becomes zero the number of a's and b's become zero and the only thing left is c star all right and c star as you can see this is a regular language why is it regular because you can generate a dfa to express this language or you can write a regular expression for this language this is already a regular expression so this is a regular language and it is not finite it is infinite because you can in c star you can accommodate a lot of strings all right 
there are not a finite number of strings c a single occurrence of c empty string multiple occurrence of c and those multiple can have any number so the correct answer would be not finite but regular so this language the intersection of the two is regular language but it is not finite so b is the correct answer so that was today's question yes it is a little tricky you have to be careful in accommodating all the strings that are present or generated by a certain language and then you have to find out what would be their intersection and what kind of language it would generate I hope you understood the question. Please mention in the comment section below how did you find the video. Subscribe to the channel of Easy Engineering Classes for more lectures on our preparation series for GATE, UGC, NET and Bank IT Officer examinations. Press the bell icon to get the notifications of our more upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. Like and share the video with your friends. Good luck.